Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to a new episode and today I have another special episode with a beautiful guest. Her name is Leticia, she is a business coach and she specializes in market research but I will let her introduce herself. So hi Leticia, welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me today. So as you said, my name is Leticia. Um, I am a market research strategist and business coach. Um, I help coaches and consultants leverage market research so that they can strategically position themselves. I am the creator of the market research mastery method, which I use with my clients so that they can uh, really just start using market research in their business and move themselves forward. Awesome. So there are so many things to talk about because as new entrepreneurs, we are told to niche down and it can be a little bit hard. So before we go into the whole niche uh, thing, could you tell us a little bit about your story and how you came to do what you do and to specialize into what you're specializing? Absolutely. So before I came into the coaching world, I have 13 years of data analytics experience. I came into this space not understanding marketing, not understanding sales, but having a very clear understanding of how to use data to my benefit. So a huge part of my story is really about my journey particularly in the early years of entrepreneurship. I hired a coach who told me to do market research, but she told me that I needed to understand what my ideal clients like to eat and where they like to shop and um, what type of magazines they read. And it didn't make sense to me um, because as someone who loves data, works with data, I know that the data that you use has to be great data. I couldn't see how understanding that someone eats at Burger King three times a week was going to help me create coaching offers. Oh. So I developed a process. And for the first two years of my business, all I did was market research. Um, I spent a lot of time having conversations with people, really understanding them at a soul level. And with that information, I would create offers. Um, and I would go back and sell it to people. Um, I eventually transitioned into business coaching. And a huge part of my program was centered around market research because I really felt like it was a great way for particularly new coaches to come into the market. But a lot of my clients just skipped over it. And then they still struggle to create offers. They still struggle to connect with their ideal clients. And I had an aha moment um, last year. And I was like, okay, I'm doing the business coaching, but I'm not completely lit up. And I see a huge gap for new entrepreneurs, new coaches who really don't understand how to do the market research process correctly which is why I now specialize in it I've created um, a very unique process which helps my clients to integrate market research as a regular business activity which then allows them to be more strategic in their business I came to this this point in time in my in my life and my business where I really wasn't happy Right. So I spend a lot of time reflecting on what I do well, what I really love to do, which is why now I'm focusing on that research solely because I'm an analytical person and I love teaching people how to be more analytical. So <laughs> that was a lot, <laughs> but that's basically how I got to where I am. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. And I'm sure a lot of people who are listening to us can relate because I know I can relate. You know, when you hear about market research, it's like, how, how do I do that? Okay. I ask questions to people, but then what do I do with the data? So just to come back on what I was starting to say earlier about niching. There are so many things in this industry about niching, not niching, what is a niche? So what would be your approach about choosing your ideal client? 
So my thought process about this is I like to liken it to shoes. I think the best way to describe it is this. There are probably hundreds of different shoes. You have, you know, stilettos, you have ledges, you have running shoes, you have sliders, but not every shoe is fitted for every purpose. If you try to run a marathon in stilettos, you absolutely can. But your back, your ankles, and your thighs will absolutely be hating you by mile two. And that is the same with business. You can absolutely serve the 8.1 billion people in this world, but you probably won't do it well. So the purpose of niching is to find what you are best suited for so that you can create the transformation or solve the problem for the people who are best suited to work with you. Wow, I love this analogy. And if someone had explained this in those terms to me to 2016 me, <laughs> that would have made my life easier. So thanks a lot for sharing this, uh, this approach. So yeah, so how do you incorporate market research in like in your daily business activity? Because I get it that market research can sound like, oh my God, I need to talk to several people and oh my God, maybe I need to redo all my offers. Uh, what if I find out that what I was doing is not good enough or, you know, all these kinds of things that the mind can come up with. So what would you have to say about that? Yes, you have to be in a position to make an informed decision, right? A lot of people look at market research as this tedious task that's going to take them a long time. And in actuality, it does. Like, I'm not going to, like, dispute that. But you can make it fun. It doesn't always have to be, like, this regimented um, approach to collecting information. You and I connected via a Facebook group. You and I had a conversation over a coffee chat. Because I am a person who's always looking to gather information, I learned a lot about you just by having a conversation. And it wasn't a formal conversation, but I learned a lot because my process was, even if she isn't my ideal client. I still want to know what's going on in her life. We interact on a daily basis with hundreds of people sometimes. And if we just spent a moment being curious, we can learn a lot. And I think that's what I like to, you know, really emphasize. Market research is about being curious and finding ways to gather information that may not seem like um, you know, formal market research. So most uh, entrepreneurs, particularly if you're on Facebook, in Facebook groups, right? Your ideal client is in their asking questions. Market research would be going in and finding out what kind of questions people are asking. And then using that as an opportunity to create content to solve those problems, to answer those questions, or just by simply having conversations with people, you know, collaborating, meeting people, and just having coffee chats, networking. You can get a lot of information from that. And then taking that information and saying, what have I learned? And based on the information that I know that I have in front of me, does my offer solve the problem that I know people are having? Does my offer help my ideal client move forward? The problem that I see is people who do do market research tend to do it at the beginning of their business and then they don't do it again. Or they may do it when they're creating offers and then they don't do it again. But this, you're missing out on huge opportunities. You're missing out on business opportunities when you do that. But it's just about leaning into your curiosity and getting obsessed I'm in the middle, of, I just finished watching you on Netflix season four. I don't know if you're into you, 
thought I like to think of myself as the Joe Gilbert of the coaching industry. I just want to know about you. And by focusing on you, I can help me. <laughs> Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, I really love everything you said. And if market research was taught in a way that sounds fun, yeah, Mm -hmm. that would really make a difference because, I mean, I I, I did market researches before, but that was not, you know, at some point you're like, why am I doing this? How is that going to help me? Mm -hmm. When you don't have someone to help you, and I'm not talking from the place of, oh my God, poor me, I don't know what to do. It's just, you cannot know what you don't know, right? And that's why we are all specialists in something. Mm -hmm. We are all here to help one another, right? With our own unique skill set. So it's more about education and not only being like uh, having a coach who tells you, You need to do this and then do that, but you don't really understand why or how, because there is this whole human approach. And and yes, it can be scary. It can be scary when you are a new entrepreneur and you have to be out there. You have to position yourself as a business owner, but you're just starting. So you don't really have any experience. So your, your imposter syndrome can come up to the surface. So what tip would you would you give to someone who needs to do a market research? So I know you mentioned the coffee chat and those are always fun. So what mindset shift tip would you give? So I think it's interesting that you mentioned the imposter syndrome and how particularly if you're new in an industry, you feel like you don't have enough experience. One of the things that I focus on in my 360 degree approach to market research is that everything that you do in your business starts with you. And that means you get to determine what you are an expert in. And trust me, everybody is an expert in something. And if you can determine that first, then you're in a position to solve a problem, which is what business is about, solving problems for the masses. You're in a position to solve a problem that you don't need, um, you know, extra training in you you don't need years to establish yourself as the authority if you start from the baseline of what can i solve for the world you are always in a position to assert yourself as an expert and once you do that it's really just about refining the problem that you're solving through the market research process right like Sometimes we have these ideas about what our ideal client is going through and we're kind of off base because we're using an assumption. But it's just about, I think the biggest thing is being able to refine the problem that you're solving in your business based on what you you bring to the table what somebody else brings to the table not what half the industry brings to the table just you because you have a unique set of skill sets um that can help someone solve that problem and i think if you just lean into that then you you are well ahead of the curve in most cases right it doesn't have to look like what everybody else is doing it doesn't have to feel like what everybody else is doing you can make it work for you and then that's where you find content contentment in your business you're not doing things that don't feel aligned you're not doing things that don't make you happy and then you can show up in that space and you can serve at a greater magnitude as a result I love that. I love what you said about finding your own uniqueness because it's easy, you know, and sometimes even it's like, go and see what your competitors are doing. But this can be a little bit tricky because then if you suffer from comparison, (laughs) you're going to compare (laughs) yourself. And, and then you you might want to once again if you suffer from impostor syndrome or if you if you don't trust your skills you might want to subconsciously because sometimes you people are not aware they're doing that they're like copy mm-hmm. or if this works for this human being maybe I should do the same and that's when I find that looking for a business strategy 
before doing the mindset and working on yourself can be a little bit tricky because strategy is one thing, but no strategy in the world is going to replace your own uniqueness and your own way to adjust, adapt the strategy to you, right? So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mindset work is always very, very important, I believe. And that's why I love what you said about finding your own uniqueness. So this is also something you're you're guiding your your clients to to doing because that's what you said a little bit earlier about finding your strength, right? Mm-hmm. So then about the the whole mindset work, I love your approach as well because the market research, because you're doing it from the beginning and it's something consistent. It's something you can grow, like you, it can grow with your business and it can help you grow your business as well. And that's also a way of not comparing yourself to others. And tell me if I'm wrong, but it's also a way to actually see that you have your space in the world, in the business world, because you, the more you talk to people, the more you see that, yes, this human being is doing this. This human being is doing this, but even if you have the same mission to help people do this or do that, you can tell that one is specializing more into this, the other one more into that. So I feel it also helps you find your your space and take the space that Mm -hmm. is yours. Would, Would you agree with that? Completely agree. So part of my 360 degree approach to market research obviously has you looking at your direct competitors, but not in a place that gets you into that comparison, I guess, right? Because you've established what you do very well, what you're excited to do, what you're already an expert in, you're looking at your competitors from the lens of what gaps can I feel based on what you offer? I love that just being able to shift your mindset that someone just because a million people are doing the same thing doesn't mean that you don't have a place. You have a place because those million and one people aren't doing what you can do. They don't have your skill that they don't, they can't create the same competitive advantage that you can create. So I think a lot of times it's really about where can I fit in that will allow me to stand out, right? So like for me, for instance, I'm a business coach. However, I solely focus on market research. There's nobody else out there doing it. And as a result, I fit into an industry where I've been able to stand out immediately. And I think when we look at it from that point of view, if we looking at it from serving, it's always about servitude, right? If we look at it from serving, how can you serve the people who are best suited to work with you in a way that nobody else in the market can serve them? And then you just capitalize on that. You capitalize on the gaps that you see. You capitalize on on what you do amazingly. And then you're in a position to consistently make money in your business. It's not about following. It's about leading. And that is what's important. Right. I love that. And, you know, I'm all about self-leadership and leading yourself so you can lead others to be the leader of their life and reach their own success. And as I always say, success is something very personal because success to me means something different from success to you or to someone else. Right. Because we all have uniqueness. Mm -hmm. We all have our own dreams, our own notion of freedom, what freedom means to us right and we are all business owners because we Mm -hmm. want some freedom and we want to serve like you said serving being of service while Mm -hmm. getting a life that makes us excited to wake up to like for example I mean I used to love my corporate job don't get me wrong but there was always this apprehension on Monday morning like oh you see the whole week ahead like they are working hours that you cannot get away from right but when you're a business owner you you have the 
the freedom to create your own schedule, your own pace of life. This is also something that is priceless. So really leading yourself and doing things that you love. This is very, very important. I was in corporate, in corporate uh, and civil, <laughs> in the civil world for many, many years. I was in corporate for 15 um, I was a civil servant for 10. So business ownership for me was very new. Um, and then I had to make a lot of adjustments I as a process, as, yeah. as part of the process. So that's really amazing how you, how you found your uniqueness and you found the way to make something that makes a lot of people roll their eyes into something <laughs> that is doable and that can be fun. So this is also very, mm -hmm. very exciting. And this also places us more into serving, you know, because you, you talk to people, so you, you know what they need and you can serve them better. So this is really, mm -hmm. really I'm, I'm very happy that we connected and I really learned a lot from you and uh, I, I love it. So... Would you like to share? Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Would you like to share where our lovely people listening to us right now can find you? If you have a, a new offer being launched or tell us everything about you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we'll start with where you can find me. I, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's where I spend a lot of my time. I'm hanging out on LinkedIn. Um, my name on LinkedIn is Leticia Francis, Market Research Strategist. That's my name. Um, and also on Facebook, it's Leticia R. Francis on Facebook. Those are the two places. I have a account on Instagram, but I'm, I'm hardly there. But as far as uh, offers, I am really excited because I am releasing, I am launching... Um, a course this week. So it'll be a DIY market research solutions, giving you all the things market research. Um, I'm literally giving you the process that I used for two years in my business um, and teaching you how to not only do the market research, but take that information and create offers as a result craft your content strategy, build your client acquisition system, and then create um, it as a regular business activity. So I'm, I'm laying it all out on the, on the line, giving you everything that you need to create consistent income in your business. Wow, that's amazing. That sounds so juicy. So I would really advise everybody to go and check you out on your social media, and you also have a website. I will link everything in the description of this podcast anyway, so everyone can click on the links and uh, directly connect with you. So that sounds really like uh, a wonderful offer. I'm very excited for you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited. So in my business, I have done for you, done with you, and now there is the DIY solution. So I have a solution for everybody. <laughs> love it. I love it. Yeah. So thank you very much. Do you have a last word for everybody who is listening? Yes. Your offers start with you. Your consistent income starts with you. Your success in business starts with you. So spend time getting to know you so that you can bring that brilliance to the world. Love it. That's that <laughs> has been a better, more perfect way to end this episode. Leticia, thank you so much for having been my guest. It was so much fun to have you. So enriching. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody who listened. Feel free to check out Leticia and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, Leticia. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for having me.